ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله Indeed, the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah. وَخَيْرُ الْهَدِي هَدِي مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ And the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. وَشَرُ الْأَمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا And the worst of affairs are those things we really invent into this religion of ours. وَكُلُّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ And everything we really invent into this religion of ours is innovation. وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ And every, every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. ثُمَّ أَمَّا بَعْدٍ أَبُو جُرَيْ جَابِرْ بِنْ سَلِيمْ الْحُجَمِ He said to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم اعهد إلي فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تصبن أحدا قال فما سببت بعده حرا ولا عبدا ولا بعيرا ولا شاتا قال ولا تحقرن شيئا من المعروف وأن تكلم أخاك وأنت منبسط إليه وجهك إن ذلك من المعروف وارفع إزارك إلى نصف الساق فإن أبيت فعل الكعبين وإياك وإسبال الإزار فإنها من المخيلة وإن الله وإن الله لا يحب المخيلة وإن امرؤ شتمك أو عيرك بما يعلم فيك فلا تعيره بما تعلم تعلم فيه فإنما وبال وبال ذلك ذاك ذلك عليه This hadith which is in the Sunnah of Abu Dawood, Sheikh Ladani, he authenticated it as Sahih. <clears throat> Abu Juray, he said to the Prophet ﷺ, give me some advice. So the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, do not abuse anyone. Do not curse them or insult them or verbally attack them. He said that he did not, after that, abuse a free man or a slave or a camel or a sheep, henceforth. He said, do not look down on any good work. And when you speak to your brother, show him a cheerful face. This is a good work. Have your garments, your lower garment, your pants or your thobe or whatever, your izar, whatever it may be, halfway down your shin. And if you cannot do that, then above your ankles. Beware of trailing the lower garment for his conceit and arrogance. And Allah does not like conceit and arrogance. And if a man abuses or shames you, for something which he finds in you, then do not shame him for something that you find in him. He will bear the evil consequences for it. So this hadith is a complete summary of important aspects that we should be applying to our daily lives, especially with one another as brothers and sisters in faith. So let us look at this advice in bit by bit. So the Prophet ﷺ, the first thing he said, لا تصبن أحدا Do not abuse anybody. My brothers and sisters in Islam, under this comes abuse, insulting, mocking one another. And getting to the level of that point, getting to that point. And many of us have shortcomings, defects and faults. 
that people make fun of. Sometimes we're doing the sunnah, like having the izar or the lower garment above the ankle, or the growing of the lihya of the beard, or the women wearing the hijab or the niqab, and people will even mock these things or insult them for it. And then you get defensive and you fall into the same trap by insulting other people back. But Allah and His Messenger instructed us differently. If there's positive criticism, you take it. And it's to your advantage. And if the criticism was negative or unjustified, you'll be rewarded for being patient, for having good re- behavior, for not retaliating in that way. The angels, the malaika will defend you and your honor. If you are patient, you do not retaliate. But if you retaliate, then shaitan, he becomes your passenger and allows you to do things which you will bear the consequences of. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَنِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا وَإِذَا خَاطُوهُمْ وَجَاهِمُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, and the faithful slaves of the entirely merciful one, the most gracious one, they are those who they walk on the earth with humility, with sedateness. And when the foolish address them with bad words, with insults, with mockery, then they reply back, not in the same way, but in a better way, using mild words of gentleness. Not insulting back, not mocking back, not cursing back. But they respond in ways which are gentle. Not using name calling in the likes of these. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said even this should apply to those who insult us with respect to our deen. قَالَ اللَّهُ وَلَا تَسُبُّ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهُ فَيَسُبُّ اللَّهُ عَقْرًا بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said in the Quran, what means, and do not insult those of the disbelievers who uh, do, not what they, do not insult whom they worship besides Allah. Do not insult the gods that the disbelievers worship. Because then they will insult Allah wrongfully without knowledge. So this was the level we were even taken to carry with the kuffar that what about with one another as brothers and sisters in Islam. And Sa'id ibn Musayyib radiallahu anhu anhu qala baynama Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam jalisun wa ma'ahu ashabahu waqa'a rajulun بِأَبِي بَكْرٍ فَأَذَاهُ فَصَمَتَ عَنْهُ أَبُو بَكْرٍ ثُمَّ أَذَاهُ الثَّانِيَةَ فَصَمَتَ عَنْهُ أَبُو بَكْرٍ ثُمَّ أَذَاهُ الثَّالِثَةَ فَانْتَصَرَ مِنْهُ أَبُو بَكْرٍ فَقَامَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ حِينَ حِينَ انْتَصَرَ أَبُو بَكْرٍ فَقَالَ أَبُو بَكْرٍ أَوَجَدْتُ أَوَجَدْتَ عَلَيَّ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ نزل ملك من السماء يكذب يكذبه بما قال لك فلما انتصرت وقع الشيطان فلم أكن لأجلس إلى وقع الشيطان. This hadith which is Hassan لغيره in the Sunnah of Abu Dawood and Sheikh Al Albani he authenticated as such. He said that Sayyid Al Musayyib said while we were the messenger while we were with the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم and we were sitting. A man reviled and cursed and angered Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and he insulted him. Abu Bakr, he remained silent. He continued a second time to insult him and Abu Bakr remained silent radiallahu anhu. He insulted him a third time and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he then took revenge on him. At that time he saw the Messenger of Allah sallallahu get up and leave. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he went after him and he said, Were you angry with me, O Messenger of Allah? So the Messenger of Allah he said an angel came down from the heaven and he was rejecting what that man was saying to you and defending you. But when he took revenge, a devil, a shaitan came down and I'm not going to sit when the devil came down. We have the malaika that we believe in that will defend our honor, that will record our good deeds. So be mindful of what you say and what you do to the people. Because surely it will be recorded with Allah. The next piece of advice he said, وَلَا تَحْتِرَنَّ شَيْئًا مِنَ الْمَعْرُوفِ وَأَن تُكَلَّمْ أَخَاكَ وَأَنْتَ مُنْبَصِقٌ إِلَيْهِ وَجْتُكْ إِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنَ الْمَعْرُوفِ Second point of advice he gave me, he said, do not look down upon any good work. And when you speak to your brother in faith, 
When you speak to your brother in faith, your fellow Muslim, <clears throat> show him a cheerful face. This will be a ma'roof for you, a good work. Many times we look down on some good action that could mean the world to a person or to a relationship. Towards your brother or your sister in Islam. Do not belittle any good that you can do. Meet your brothers with a smiling face. For the sisters, meet your sisters with a smiling face. This is good work. This is charity for you. An Aisha radiallahu anha and the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam maqal saddidu wa qaluhu wa alamu anna lan yadkhul ahadakum a'maluhu al-janna wa anna ahabba al-a'mali adwamuha ila Allahi wa inqal ruwahu al-Bukhari Aisha radiallahu anha the mother of the believers may Allah be pleased with her she said that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said do good deeds properly. Do them sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and according to the sunnah of His Messenger. And do them in moderation. And know that your deeds is not going to be what gets you to paradise. Your deeds is not going to be what gets you into Jannah. It is the mercy, the rahmah of Allah that will get you into paradise. Your deeds are only a means that you can do to earn His mercy. Your deeds will not get you into paradise. The most beloved deed to Allah is the one that you do the most regularly and the most consistently and constantly, even if it's a little deed. Even if it's little. وعن أبي ذر رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يحترن أحدكم شيئا من المعروف وإن لم يجد فلينق أخاه بوجه طريق وإن أشتريت لحما أو طبخت قدرا فأكثر مرقته وَغْرِفْ لِجَارِكَ مِنْهُمْ رواه الترمذي وهذا حديث صحيح The Prophet وسلم, he said let not one of you consider any good deed to be insignificant even the smallest thing the smile to the face of your brother do not consider insignificant he said if you have nothing to do of significance then at least meet your brother with a smiling face and if you buy some meat or cook something in a pot increase the broth Increase the, the broth of it so you can serve some to your neighbor. This is ma'roof. All of it is charity. All of it is sadaqah. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Man kana yu'min billahi wa yu'min al-akhir fal yaqul khayran aw liyasmut. Rawahu Bukhari wa Muslim. Abu Huraira, he narrates that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whoever believes in Allah on the last day should say only what is good or be silent. We would see the ummah flourish, the relationships flourish from the family unit, the spouses and the children, to the parents and the siblings, to the uncles and aunts, to the brothers and sisters in faith. If we just implemented this hadith, if we really believe in Allah on the last day, that we only say what is good or we shut up. But we're so big on ourselves, proud on ourselves. That we have to say what we want to say even if it means harming someone. Even if it means putting them down, making them feel little. Just to puff ourselves up and make them know that, you know, you have the upper hand on them. From ma'ru, from good deeds, is being good, being silent when even you can say something as we will see. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن العبد ليتكلم بالكلمة من رضوان الله لا يلقي لا يلقي لها بالا يرفعه الله بها درجات وإن العبد ليتكلم بكلمة من سخط الله لا يلقي لها بالا يهوي بها من في في جهنم رواه البخاري رسول محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يسأل a servant makes a statement that is so pleasing to Allah. Although you don't give it much concern, it's just natural that you're polite, that you're well-mannered, that you ask someone if you can do something for them, that you ask them about how they are doing, that you offer some help to them, all of these things. You're paying no attention to it because it's minor to you. It's normal, it's good character, it's good manners. But you say something that is so pleasing to Allah, although you don't get much concern, except that Allah will raise him darajat, levels in paradise due to it. And a servant makes a statement so displeasing to Allah. 
One that Allah does not like that you would utter from your mouth. Although he himself doesn't give much concern, you're thinking it's not a big thing that you're doing, but really with Allah, it's something that he's displeased with. And because of that, he's thrown into the hellfire. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, watch your tongues. Watch your actions and your attitudes. Yes, you have days that are trying. Calamities that might be befalling you, hardships that might be giving you a tough time. But there, there's a lot of reward, <clears throat> a lot of goodness in these minor actions. Don't ever give them up and do not belittle them, even smiling at the face of your brother. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يبلغ العبد حقيقة الإيمان حتى يحب للناس ما يحب لنفسه من الخير. In the Muslim Imam Ahmed, we have the authentic hadith where the Prophet said, the, re- the servant doesn't reach the reality of being a believer, of being a true believer, having true faith, until he loves for the people. This hadith does not mention, this narration does not mention just the believer. It doesn't mention just the Muslim, your brother. It doesn't mention just your neighbor. It mentions for the people that you will not completely have faith and reach that reality of Iman until you love for the people what you love for yourself. You should love that the disbelievers come to Islam, that they get guided to Tawheed, that they worship Allah alone without partners in truth. You should love for this and you should love for the people what you should love for what you love for yourself. And additionally, you should hate for them what you would hate for yourself. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, do not belittle any good work, and when you speak to your brother, show them a cheerful face, because this is good work. Then the Prophet said, Your garments. Now again, this is an action that we've seen brothers, I've heard brothers, making fun of other brothers with. If their garments are not trailing on the ground below their ankle, because this narration, look at all this advice the Prophet could have given a man. And he's giving him what you've heard and what we will continue to hear. He told him, have your lower garment halfway down your shin, meaning half of your lower leg. This is where your pants, your sole, your, your, uh, your uh, uh, any, any lower garment, your izad, anything you're wearing. It should end in the middle of your shin. Right? He said, if you cannot do so, then go to the level of the ankle. So it should be at or above the ankle. Because he said, beware of trailing the lower garment, for it is conceit. It is arrogance, and Allah does not like conceit or arrogance. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we see a hadith in the Sahih of Imam Muslim, where he said that the Messenger of Allah, he said, ثلاثة لا يكلمهم الله يوم القيامة ولا ينظر عليهم ولا يزكيهم ولهم عذاب أليم. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said there are three people on the day of resurrection Allah will not talk to them. Allah will not want to look at them. Allah will not purify them for their sins and they will have a painful torment. The first one the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم mentioned a Muslim, the one whose garment drags below his ankle. Now we see two things here. The one who drags it because he doesn't have a choice. What is below the ankles is in the hellfire. But this Muslim is the one who drags it below his ankles out of conceit, out of arrogance. Because you see this naturally with the people who are wealthy or have things. They drag the garment. You see it amongst the kings and the queens. They drag their, their robes and likes of this matter so it's trailing on the floor. This is not the dress of the Muslim. How can the Prophet advise such a thing and we obstinately deny it? Or we won't put it into practice, or even worse, we mock the brothers who do so. It's not that they couldn't afford a longer garment. We should not be making fun of what the Sunnah of our Messenger is. The garment of the man should be above the ankle. Preferably to the middle of the shin, and if it can, then at least above the ankle, not dragging below. Even if it's not in arrogance in your mind, it is in a hellfire. But the one who does it out of conceit and arrogance truly, then Allah will not look at him or speak to him. He will not purify him for his sins, and he'll have a painful torment. 
The other two mentioned in the hadith for the benefit, al yannan the one who reminds people of their favors. Constantly telling the people what they did for them so they can get reparations, so they can get something back in return. And the last one, the one who sells by false oaths, by false swearing. I'm not making no money on this. I uh, really don't have anything in it. I'm losing money by selling this, but you know, I'll do it for you. This false type of oath when you're buying it or when you're selling something. This will earn you the same punishment of Allah not looking at you, speaking to you, not purifying you from your, sin, from your sins and giving you a painful torment. So do not belittle this. Have your lower garments to the middle of your shin if you cannot do so, then to your ankle. Because the one who trails the lower garment, it is conceit, and Allah does not like conceit or arrogance. May Allah protect us from this. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبارك. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we're reviewing the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where Abu Jurayr Jabir bin Salim al Hujami he asked the Prophet ﷺ, oh Messenger of Allah ﷺ, give me advice. So we told him, do not abuse anyone. Do not curse anyone, do not insult anyone, do not mock anyone. He said, do not look down upon the good work, any good work. Do not look down upon any good work, even if it's small. When you speak to your brother, meet him with a cheerful face. This is ma'roof, this is good work. He said, have your garment halfway down your shin. And if you have to go further than that, then go up to the ankles, the bones on the side of your foot. Beware of trailing the lower garment because it is conceit and arrogance and Allah does not love conceit and arrogance. Then he finished with this last bit of advice. وَإِنْ إِمْرُؤٌ شَتَمَكَ أَوْ عِيَّرَكَ بِمَا يَعْلَمْ بِمَا يَعْلَمْ فِيكِ فَلَا تُعَيِّرْهُ بِمَا تَعْلَمْ فِيهِ فَإِنَّمَا وَبَالُ ذَلِكَ عَلَيْهِ The last bit of advice that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave him, he said, and if a man abuses you, if a man shames you for something that he finds in you, then do not shame him for something you find in him. He will bear the consequences of his sin and his evil. He will bear the consequences of it. Look at what our deen calls us to in terms of character, in terms of doing good, in terms of being kind and gentle, in terms of having good manners. Even if someone shames you or abuses you, hold your tongue. They will bear the consequences. They will meet their Lord with that statement. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ عَفْوًا قَالَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ مَنْ عَمَلَ صَالِحًا فَلِنَفْسِهِ وَمَنْ أَسَاءَ فَعَلَيْهَا ثُمَّ إِلَى رَبِّكُمْ تُرْجَعُونَ Allah says what means in Surah Al-Jathiyya Whosoever does a good deed, he does it for the good of his own soul. It will only benefit him in the Qiyamah. And whoever does an evil or a sin, it is against his own self. Then to your Lord will you be made to return. Then you will return to Allah and be questioned for the good you did and the evil and the bad you did. All of this reflects upon the essence of gentleness and good character, both of which are virtuous. عن عائشة رضي الله عنها قالت قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن المؤمن يذرق بحسن خلقه درجة الصائم والقائم The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said an authentic hadith in the Sunnah of Dawood and Sheikh Laban he authenticated it. He said that by his good character or her good character, a believer will attain the degree of the one who prays throughout the day, throughout the night, and fast during the day. You will reach the level of the one who does that type of ibadah just by having good morals and good character. وَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ أَثْقَلُ فِي الْمِيزَانِ مِنْ حُسْنِ الْخُلُقِ And there is nothing heavier on your scales of deeds on the day of judgment than good character and good manners. Those scales that we need, those good deeds, to outweigh the bad deeds clearly so that we can earn the mercy of Allah and go to Jannah. And this hadith is in, also in the Sunnah of Abi Dawood, and Shaykh al authenticated it. 
ثم قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنا زعيم ببيت في رغد الجنة لمن ترك المراءة وإن كان محقق وببيت في وسط الجنة لمن كان لمن ترك الكذب لمن ترك الكذب وإن كان مازحا وببيت في أعلى الجنة لمن حسن خلقه رواه أبو داود وحسنه شيخ الألباني رحمه الله in the Sunnah of Abu Dawood, we have an authentic narration where the Prophet said, I guarantee a home and the surroundings of paradise for the a man who avoids arguing and quarreling. They avoid the argument and the quarreling even when they're right and they have the position to argue because they're in the correct. But Allah will give, Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He said, I guarantee a home for the one who abandons this argumentation even when he's right. And he said, I guarantee a home in the middle part of Jannah for the one man who avoids lying, even if it's just to tell a joke. Like he's not lying to get some advance, he's joking around. The one who abandons lying to tell a joke, you're guaranteed a house in the middle of Jannah. And then the Prophet he said, I guarantee a home in the highest of Jannah, in the highest part of Jannah, for the one who has good manners and good character. Never belittle this through your good character, through your good manners, through your holding to your values and your ideals, people may enter into Islam, question Islam, and then enter into Islam because of meeting such a good person. Then finding out it's because of your deen, because of your Islam, because of what Allah and His Messenger says, and call us to that you implement that the people enter into Islam. Never belittle any of those good deeds and those good characters. But Rasulullah this hadith which is sahih in the Sunnah of Abu Dawood, Shaykh Al-Bani graded it as such, the message of Allah he said, Allah is gentle, and He loves gentleness, and He gives for gentleness what He does not give for harshness. Allah loves gentleness. Allah loves that we be gentle, we be kind, we be forgiving, we be pardoning, we overlook those who harm us. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما كان الرزق في شيء إلا زانه. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم not in the Hadith that risk, kindness and gentleness is not a part of something except that it beautifies it. And he said harshness is not a part of something except that it will corrupt it and destroy it. Be kind, be gentle. If someone accuses you or shames you. For something they find in you, don't look for faults in them to shame them and insult them. Whoever does so will bear the evil consequences of their sin. May Allah make us of those who can implement these advices. May we be of those who do not abuse or insult. And we look, we do not look down on any good work. And we look at our brothers and to the sisters at their sisters with a smiling face because this is ma'roof. And we wear our garments and take these the instructions from Allah and His Messenger وسلم, on how to even dress, we take them seriously because we don't want to fall into conceit and kibbit. And we may, may we be of those who do not abuse and shame those who may abuse and shame us so that we can be free of that evil. Allah makhsib al-Muslimina wal-Muslimat wal-Mu'minina wal-Mu'minat and ahinaad min humanawad inna ka anta sami'u qalib al-Mujib al-Da'wat ya maqalib al-Qulub sabit kulubna ala deenik يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم ألف قلوبنا بين يديك اللهم ألف قلوبنا بين يديك يا رحمة الرحمين سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين